Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to use algae to clean the bottom of your feet. What to do when your wheelbarrow will no longer talk to you. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make possum soup. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to make a concrete planter. Now, I've seen a few tutorials online, uh, several ways of making this. I'm gonna try it my way because I think that this could work, but uh, you know, if it doesn't, no big deal. This is a pretty low cost project. $3 bucket, $8, uh, whatever this is, a uh, concrete mold, and a $4 bag of concrete. So when you add that up, seven, eight, 15, $15 for this, uh, hopefully pretty easy DIY concrete planter. So here's the process. We're gonna be pouring our concrete into here. We're gonna cut this, oh God. Now this, this, makes me uncomfortable. We're gonna put this uh, thing uh, inside of the concrete planter uh, all the way down. We're gonna leave about an inch of space and then we're basically gonna be pouring our concrete all around here. Can you see me? Hey, you never talk to me anymore. We're gonna be pouring our concrete in. Uh, we're gonna pre-cut this tube uh, and then let it dry for a couple days. And then uh, once it dries, we're gonna cut off the bucket and hopefully have a nice concrete modern planter. Um, we'll see. First thing we're gonna do is mix our high strength concrete mix. You can also use Quickrete 5000 for this job if you want. I'm sure other concrete mixes work too, but these are the only two that I've ever actually used. I like a more liquidy oatmeal consistency, which I wouldn't ever recommend for anything structural, but for this planter, it's totally fine. Then you'll need to place your spacers, which I'll talk more about now. All right, I gotta hang really low for this camera angle. <sighs> so I wanna explain what I did really quick. I created one and three quarter inch spacers because uh, what happens is whenever you start putting your concrete in, this tube starts to move. Uh, so you could have a really wide part of one side and then a very thin part on the other. So the spacers just kind of keep the, uh, the, space the space even around your planter. Now, one other benefit that I found that is happening here is because this is, what? Because this is so snug right here um, from the spacers, it's actually gonna not move at all while I'm putting my concrete in here. Uh, so I'm gonna fill it up with concrete once the concrete kind of, once I get to the top here and it starts to set, I can pull out these spacers, fill the rest in with concrete, and then start troweling the top to get it nice and smooth. Remember how I said I like a more liquidy concrete? Well, this is why. It allows you to actually pour it into the mold versus having to scoop it in little by little with a gardening shovel. I also made sure that my spacers were evenly spaced because if not, it would warp your bucket unevenly. Once my bucket started getting full, then I started shoveling in the remaining concrete since it was impossible to pour at this point because the cardboard was in the way. I let my concrete set for about 30 minutes before taking out my spacers. Don't take them out too soon because it's still possible for your cardboard tube to shift around if the concrete is too wet. Once the spacers were out, I filled in their spots with concrete and started troweling the top. But first I wanted to make sure that my bucket was level or else the top would dry at a weird angle. I just used shims that were laying around to do this. Now when it comes to troweling, you can spend as much or as little time as you want doing this, but if you want a super smooth finish on the top, then I recommend taking your time here. Then I placed a plastic bag over the mold to protect it while the concrete cured. Once the concrete cured for three days, it was time to remove the bucket. I was pretty happy to find that it was pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. I started cutting away pieces of the bucket with a box cutter, which was adorable that I thought this would work. I mean, technically it did. It just wasn't a sustainable way to go about this. I quickly graduated to a much better tool, a reciprocating saw. My blade ended up being a little dull and old, but it worked like a charm. Be very careful when you're doing this because if you cut too deep, you can scratch or cut into the actual concrete. Breaking apart the bucket ended up being a tad harder than I thought, so this was a really proud moment for me, as you're about to see. Oh baby! <laughs> Next came the sanding touch-ups. I sanded the top of the bucket using 120 and 150 grit sandpaper. If you trowel the top correctly, you won't need to sand very long. Then I taped this bad boy up since I decided to paint the top on a whim. Then I hit it with some black spray paint. Then I hit it with some dark teal spray paint because I've got the world's worst case of buyer's remorse. Then came the most satisfying part of any paint project, de-taping. I filled the bottom with some spare gravel for drainage. Then I added some potting soil. Then I cut the plastic plant pot with a box cutter and placed it into my planter, which you don't see here because my camera stopped recording. 
Now my dogs are weird and love to eat dirt, so I place some gravel at the top to keep them from snacking on this fine, fine soil. And just like that, my planter project was done. This was a really easy $15 project that I think anyone can do. Of course a reciprocating saw helps, but you can do this job without power tools, it's just going to take a little bit more time and effort. If you like this video, please crush the spirits of that subscribe button and like this video while you're at it. I'll see you on the next episode of Rob Built, where I teach you how to taxidermy an armadillo.